Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for uh, joining class. Welcome, success, Anita, Lailama, and Jafina. Uh, we'll begin class. The others will join in. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Any one of you? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have, God. God, we thank you for the authority that you have given us. Thank you for uh, joining us into your family, God. Thank you for uh, helping us to live a life uh, that represents your kingdom, not here on this earth, Jesus. But as we learn about you today, help us open our mind and heart and, uh, and accept it and do it all this life so that we can bring glory to you, Jesus. I place each and every one of my classmates into your hands. Give us the good Wi-Fi connection that we need throughout the class and be with us and teach us and guide us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeffina. I'll just uh, present the notes, the PDF. Okay, are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes? Okay. Okay, so today we are going to begin with uh, chapter 8, um, the City White Church, uh, chapter 8. So if you have your uh, uh, books with you, uh, the book Kingdom Builders, you can open to that or you can just follow through with the, the PDF that I presented on the screen. Okay. So basically, the citywide church uh, is referring to the body of Christ. Uh, we know that the body of Christ uh, is, uh, you know, all believers in a local church. So all the believers in a local church uh, comprise of uh, the body of Christ in a specific city. And we refer to this as the citywide church. So the citywide church is basically referring to the body of Christ uh, in a city. Uh, and the body of Christ in the city is comprising of all believers in a, a local church. Now, as we've been, uh, you know, stating again and again through uh, all the previous chapters, chapters 1 to 7, the importance of not just uh, fulfilling God's call, his vision, his plan, his purpose uh, for our individual lives, uh, but it is also how you know, as we go about fulfilling God's uh, plan, purpose, um, his, uh, uh, his vision for our lives, uh, how we can use that to, uh, you know, build the kingdom uh, of God. So as uh, Christian leaders or as believers, uh, we need to have a vision where we are seeing uh, uh, our own specific uh, calling, uh, the functions that God has given to us. We understand that in terms of building the kingdom of God in the city and seeing, you know, just beyond our own vision, our own local church, our own Christian organization on how we can uh, you know, uh, build the kingdom of God in our city and uh, hence help in the transformation of uh, uh, our own specific cities that God has placed us in. So uh, basically before we begin, uh, you know, uh, kingdom building or partnering with others uh, in the previous chapter, in chapter 7, we saw how we need to be co-working uh, partnering with other believers, with other leaders, with other churches in a city transformation, in building the kingdom of God. Uh, and so, you know, there's a call here for unity and oneness. There's uh, unity in uh, in everything that we do and, you know, unity and fellowship of the uh, spirit. So irrespective of whether we uh, come from different denominations where you know that uh, we have our own forms our own expressions our own styles of worship uh, we need to remember that as a body of christ uh, as believers in a specific local church and all the local churches put together that comprise a, a, a body of Christ in a city, we need to remember that, you know, even though we are, uh, uh, we are part of different uh, congregations where we have our own forms of worship and, you know, uh, expressions, our styles of worship, uh, we see that, you know, we are all one. 
you know because why is there a oneness in us because we are uh, you know all believers in the lord jesus christ uh, uh, the local church comprises of people who uh, who believe in the lord jesus christ who have embraced him as their uh, uh, lord and savior and hence we are one body and because we are one body you know although we are uh, of part of different local congregations uh, we are under the submission or the lordship of jesus christ uh, he is our lord we are worshiping one god uh, and we are all you know saved by his grace and what he has done on the cross for us and hence uh, you know there is there's oneness in us and hence we need to seek uh, first his kingdom and his will to be done here uh, in our city we also need to uh, value respect support and partner with one another to further uh, god's kingdom uh, uh, in our uh, city and uh, uh, here the the important thing is that you know uh, even uh, Jesus in his high priestly prayer in John chapter 17 verse 21 he said you know father you know let them be one as we are one you know if you look at John chapter 17 verse 21 and they all may be one as you father are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me so why what is the importance of uh, uh, you know uh, there being unity in the body of christ in the local church why what is the importance of us coming together as one why is there importance of us uh, being together in one uh, as one body in unity and fellowship of the spirit uh, so that you know uh, god's love will be expressed in and through us okay so even as god's love is expressed in and through us what will it result in it will result in uh, people in our city will turn to see who jesus really is and believe in him so uh, the purpose of coming together in unity and in oneness uh, uh, and in you know the fell in oneness in fellowship of spirit is basically that you know that the love of god will be expressed through us and when the love of god is expressed through us people in our city will turn to see who jesus uh, really is and they would believe in him so there's a call for unity and oneness and this call for unity and oneness uh, you know, should start with the leadership, uh, you know, the citywide church uh, come together in unity and fellowship. Uh, we need to get all the leaders in the city uh, together. Uh, why is it important for the leaders in the city to come together? Because the leaders of the city are disconnected with each other. The rest of the body or the rest of the believers uh, uh, in Christ will also be disconnected. But if the leaders uh, of the various churches, uh, uh, various Christian organization, mission organization, you know, come together, they are connected together. They are, uh, you know, uh, they are one uh, together as one body. Then the rest of the body of Christ, the rest of the believers will also be connected uh, with each other. Now, when we're talking about uh, the leaders, uh, you know coming together in unity and oneness and being connected with each other we're not just talking about them uh, you know just knowing the names of other uh, believers and other you know, you know pastors and leaders in our church uh, uh, it's not just knowing uh, who is running which church who's running which organization just knowing their names but it is uh, you know a building a relationship with other leaders in the city building a relationship with uh, pastors in the city with the uh, uh, heads of christian organizations mission organizations you know uh, bishops and leaders in, in our uh, city so for the citywide church you know to come together we need to build a relationship the 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 leaders basically should build a relationship of trust of respect of fellowship of sharing um, uh, and once uh, this is happening at that level of uh, uh, with the leaders the leadership level then you know the rest of the body of christ the rest of the believers will also be connected and there will be unity and uh, oneness so how can we go up how can leaders in this in a specific city how can they uh, you know come together um, 
uh, in unity, in oneness, in uh, you know, building relationships uh, with each other rather than just knowing each other's names and what church they run or what organization they run. It's good to have a monthly roundtable uh, disc uh, discussion, and this is uh, something that uh, you know, um, uh, you know, APC has started where. Uh, uh, we have uh, a monthly roundtable discuss uh, discussion uh, with all the pastors and uh, leaders in our city. Uh, they come together um, and we begin with just a short time of worship uh, and then, you know, uh, a time of prayer where we're just basically praying for uh, our city, praying for our nation, praying for uh, the churches in our city, praying for uh, uh, you know, people who do not know Christ, the problems, the difficulties, the challenges uh, that uh, that uh, 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 that are happening in our city or in our in our nation. We pray for, about that, and then you know, uh, just a, a, a time of breakfast where uh, people just sit there. Uh, you know, leaders catch up with each other, meet each other, discuss with each other, and then um, you know, there's a time where. Um, uh, we discuss on specific uh, uh, issues, uh, take a Bible passage, uh, and, you know, we are all seated in groups, um, and uh, we just read the Bible passage, and there are some questions that, uh, uh, you know, are drawn out of that uh, passage, and then, uh, you know, uh, all the pastors and leaders who are sitting in groups, in the various groups, they discuss together. So as they're discussing, they just, you know, uh, you know, get to know each other, build relationships with each other, uh, also are able to, uh, you know, share, discuss, and interact uh, with each other. And, uh, and as they do this, you know, they write down their learnings, and then each group presents their uh, learning. So this uh, is an effective way where, you know, we're also building relationships, we're coming together in one platform, discussing things, uh, you know, uh, sharing our views. Um, and also, you know, in such an environment, uh, basically, you know, God even changes our hearts and our minds, uh, brings us together in unity and in uh, oneness. Uh, but what should not happen in these meetings is, you know, not just a, a place where people come and then, you know, you have a time of worship and then you listen to a message and then fellowship a little and go away. But something that is more effective in terms of, you know, people sharing, discussing, interacting uh, with each other. In, uh, in small groups and then sharing uh, what you have discussed uh, so that you know others can also uh, learn so one good way of bringing leaders together uh, could be this uh, you know a monthly roundtable discussion uh, which uh, APC has already started uh, in our city uh, and you know um, you know, if you feel led, you could do this in your own city to bring uh, all the pastors, leaders, uh, of various uh, Christian organizations together, uh, just to uh, you know, in, in, in uh, uh, on one common platform where you can build relationships of trust, of uh, you know, uh, like we said, you know, build relationships of uh, uh, trust, and uh, you know, uh, 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 where you can partner with each other, where there is uh, uh, love that is built with each other as well. Okay. So why do we need to partner uh, with, uh, you know, other believers in our city, with other leaders, with other churches, is uh, to partner to bring about a city uh, transformation and city transformation in all areas, uh, not only just in spiritual, but also the social, the marketplace and uh, physical transformation. We look at each of these areas uh, in a detail in a little bit. Uh, but a partnership are coming together as a citywide church uh, should just go beyond uh, you know just events and gatherings and uh, but but also must translate into you know partnering uh, 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 with churches and mission organizations um, uh, in uh, in in way uh, in you know building up uh, the initiatives that have already been started in various areas or also taking on new initiatives together so that we can reach out to the entire uh, city so how do we do this there are two ways first of all is to encourage partnership in things that are already being done in the city uh, so how do you uh, how do we encourage uh, partnership in 
the things that have already been done in our city. Uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, churches that uh, have ongoing programs um, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, feeding uh, poor people in the slum, uh, you know, or reach, uh, outreach in the slum, evangelism in the slums, uh, equipping ma marketplace believers. So what uh, uh, churches who are already, uh, you know, engaging in these ongoing programs can come together to, s to see how they can all pool in their resources, their ideas, their strategies, uh, so that, you know, they can all do it together as one. When we do, we can actually uh, impact our entire city. We can actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, effect our, uh, uh, bring measures that are effective uh, for the entire city rather than just one church doing it in one small area, a few people, but churches together or Christian organizations together coming together so that we can, uh, you know, pool in our resources um, and ideas to impact the entire city on projects that, you know, we had already uh, initiated ongoing programs in our church. Uh, it can also be, you know, if uh, churches or, or Christian organizations are, for example, you know, working with um, uh, uh, building up marriages. Okay, so if there are like uh, uh, three or four or five churches that are uh, working towards building marriages, then all the other churches who are also having, uh, you know, that same burden, that same initiative, that program that they have started, they can come together and, uh, you know, uh, they can uh, develop a ministry for marriages, how they can uh, uh, to serve their own churches and also to serve all the other churches uh, or to serve the entire body of Christ in our uh, city. Also, you know, uh, how can we encourage partnership in things that are already begun is uh, how, you know, uh, rich, richer churches, churches that are very well to do, how they can fin financially provide uh, for poorer churches, small startup churches, uh, churches that, uh, you know, are just starting and they can just contribute, uh, you know, uh, and just provide for a, a PA system or, you know, a projector or a laptop or, a, you know, sound system, whatever you, they can do or help them with uh, putting a roof, a proper roof or a, a, a proper place where they can meet just, uh, you know, helping uh, poorer churches. And also, you know, uh, churches that are, uh, you know, strong in the Lord, mature churches, how they can uh, impart, they can equip younger churches uh, uh, you know, and how they can build them up spiritually, how they can empower them um, to do what Christ has uh, called them to uh, do. But even as we say this, you know, there are a few challenges uh, that uh, people can face even as, uh, you know, we want to, uh, you know, come together, partner together in things that have already been done in our city through various churches and Christian organizations. There are some challenges, uh, you know, the challenges can be, uh, you know, pastors uh, are uh, uh, afraid, you know, that if they come together to partner with uh, other churches they might lose their uh, their believers uh, the other pastors in other churches can steal their uh, sh sheep so to say so they can be sheep stealing and um, you know so that's why pastors don't come together because they're afraid that other pastors will you know uh, uh, will uh, steal their uh, believers or steal their sheep so the fear of losing congregation members is always there in every pastor's heart and hence you know um, uh, the city white church coming together there should be a uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 a common trust that is built up among pastors, among leaders, that even as they come together, even as they, uh, you know, come together to partner together to build uh, the city, uh, 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 with the city by church being, uh, 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 you know, in unity and oneness, you know, that uh, there is trust among uh, the leaders uh, uh that you know that that they are there in this to develop a kingdom mindset uh and uh, not to just build their own uh specific uh, organizations christian organizations or uh, their own ministries or their own churches but you know uh, a way that they can come together 
uh, and there's a sense of trust, loyalty, integrity, honesty, uh, that pastors will not lose their, uh, you know, their congregation members, even as they come together uh, to build up uh, the city or the city transformation uh, through the, you know, the citywide church coming together. Also ensuring that uh, the vision and the mission of the local churches and the non-Christian uh, or the non-church uh, organizations or the Christian ministries are fulfilled even as they partner together with each other. So even as you're partnering with each other on the same um, projects or the same vision or the same, uh, you know, leading that God has given to us as a church, uh, then, you know, we are coming together to partner with other churches and other uh, Christian organizations. Uh, you know, pastors uh, should have this sense of uh, a comfort level where uh, they know that even as they're partnering together with other uh, uh, ministers or other leaders in, the, uh, in our city, that their specific vision and mission that God has given to them uh, is not will not be hindered and uh, you know the strategies that uh, that you come up with uh, will be inclusive of uh, everybody's vision and mission and uh, hence it will uh, benefit this uh, individual churches as well as it will benefit the citywide church as a whole and help in city transformation okay the next one is, uh, you know, how can we come together uh, in partnership for city transformation is uh, how, you know, uh, churches can partner together, Christian organizations can partner together uh, to start or oversee new initiatives uh, that are done. Uh... Yes, Isaac, you have your hand up. Okay, maybe it's an accident. Okay, so how we can start new initiatives, uh, you know, to reach out to our uh, city and um, these new initiatives can be, you know, um, uh, uh, rescuing street children, uh, just providing a home for them to live in, take care of them, uh, educating them, helping them, uh, you know, to have a good future, securing their, uh, you know, helping them to have, uh, uh, you know, get into colleges, a good career uh, so that they can have a good future. And so, you know, since this is a big project, uh, you know, several churches and Christian organizations can come together, uh, you know, uh, uh, to venture in this uh, or partner in this initiative uh, because this is something that is huge and big and this will truly you know impact our uh, city but for this to happen there are some challenges you know uh, churches uh, or leaders uh, uh, you know, can be a little hesitant because it involves a lot of uh, money. Uh, so, you know, financial investment, uh, administrative work that is required, uh, whether, you know, uh, people will be honest, there will be integrity, uh, you know, where things will go smoothly. So that is why, you know, uh, even before uh, leaders can venture into all of this, uh, you know, leaders in our city should build that uh, level of trust and that level of integrity and honesty and transparency with with each other where we can come together in such platforms and where you know uh, people can trust each other they can invest their money financially and uh, you know know that things will run smoothly and there's also unity and oneness and uh, you know uh, oneness in thought and mind a kingdom mindset uh, where and uh, you know kingdom culture that is built up even as they uh, begin these new uh, uh, efforts or these new initiatives okay uh, the other thing that we can also do uh, as a citywide church is you know to have citywide unity gatherings um, uh, you know psalms chapter 50 verse 5 says gather my saints together to me those who have made a covenant with me by uh, sacrifice so it's it's uh, you know god's uh, uh, divine will that you know we all not only uh, come together in unity and oneness uh, but we also fellowship together in uh, you know unity and oneness in the spirit uh, and hence also you know gathering together as saints 
um, uh, so that you know uh, there is unity and there's oneness among us now the challenges that can uh, come up here is that you know even as uh, there is unity gatherings this can be on different occasions you know uh, where uh, churches come together and worship um, and you know uh, they can uh, they can be time of worship and the worship can be include uh, you know contemporary songs uh, uh, hymns and um, uh, also there can be a time where we are celebrating the lord's table uh, which is uh, a powerful statement of us being one in Christ Jesus and uh, uh, even as we do this you know uh, you know everybody's on the same level whether they are believers leaders bishops pastors whoever they are all of them on the same level there are no guests no dignitaries uh, you know uh, everybody's on the same level just uh, worshiping God and uh, the only focus or the only dignitary that receives all the glory and honor is Christ himself uh, uh, and uh, so Christ is exalted even as we uh, meet together and you know there is power uh, and there is uh, the move of the spirit in a powerful way even as uh, you know believers uh, come uh, together okay but there can be various challenges um, first challenge can be you know pastors will have a fear that they will lose their own congregation members to other churches uh, hence uh, you know leaders uh, in the city should assure each other that this unity gatherings uh, is basically is to promote uh, unity and oneness in the citywide church and they are coming together to exalt Christ alone and this is not for us to you know uh, 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 pull away uh, believers from other churches into our own uh, churches. The other thing uh, is, uh, you know, uh, there's a fear in the hearts of uh, different pastors in the city that uh, even as, you know, people come together for this unity gatherings where there is, uh, the people worship together in this unity gatherings, uh, you know uh, the the doctrine of their own church can be corrupted uh, hence you know if we are planning to have these unity gatherings then uh, the people who are planning it the leaders who are planning it uh, need to be sensitive to uh, all the backgrounds or all the denominations that are there in the city and uh, they need to know that uh, their main agenda coming together is unity of faith not unity of uh, doctrine okay and uh are coming together uh in this manner is um you know is to worship god and also uh you know for uh, uh the church to be edified uh in the ways uh, uh of the lord in uh, in the knowledge of the son of god okay so unity gatherings are another powerful thing we had that once in our own city and it was it's a wonderful experience a very powerful experience uh, that people uh, uh, can experience can have and it's good if you know pastors and churches uh, church leaders um, uh, or ministry organizations can come together you know once or twice in a year just you know bring uh, this unity gatherings it's a powerful um, uh, a work of the spirit that can be done and also uh, it sends across a powerful message uh, to our city that you know we as believers are one even though we worship in different churches and um, you know um, we have different uh, uh, ways of worship we have different doctrines but ultimately we are worshiping one god uh, the father son and holy spirit who work in perfect unity and in um, oneness okay so the citywide church uh, when they come together they get you know uh, uh, they're coming together uh, uh, will help in strengthening um, uh, the unity the cooperation the fellowship across churches and ministry and also you know uh, help in uh, you know transformation of the city by the power of the gospel and uh, you know this can be uh, spiritual transformation social transformation a marketplace transformation and also physical transformation in our uh, city so what do we mean when we say uh, spiritual transformation is uh, you know believers across churches uh, can come together uh, in small prayer groups just praying uh, for the uh, uh, 
body of Christ in our city, also praying for uh, unbelievers in our city, praying for uh, the move of God in our city and whatever, you know, um, social evils are there they can pray towards the same uh also you know pastors uniting together praying for our city uh you know and also uh the churches and mission organizations or christian organizations coming together uh you know uh, working together uh, to evangelize and disciple uh, people in our city uh, the next one is social transformation social transformation is basically how we all can come together to you know work against social evils especially uh, suicide uh, drug abuse poverty uh, corruption oppression you know um, when the church comes together and uh, when they pray together when they you know, uh, work together against these social evils. Uh, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is so powerful that can even destroy some of, you know, all of these evils that our society is facing and can, uh, you know, just bring about God's kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, his kingdom presence, uh, and his kingdom power uh, in our uh, city. And people can experience the kingdom of God in our city. Rather than working in isolation, uh, you know, when churches and Christian ministries join hands in pooling their resources uh, together, you know, uh, we can impact our city to a larger extent, a greater extent, uh, where we can help the poor, uh, you know, uh, just feed the poor, uh, the hungry, give shelter to the homeless, uh, care for the widows, orphans, and those who are uh, less privileged and also we can bring about a transformation in the marketplace you know there are many believers in the marketplace they're going through various uh, challenges various issues they can meet together discuss and uh, you know uh, edify each other build each other strengthen up strengthen each other and also see how they can you know take this mountain of um, business where they can bring in god's kingdom reign his kingdom rule activities presence uh, bring about his will uh, uh, in in the business place how they can um, bring about uh, you know good values uh, a good ethical value system uh, where there is a work culture where there is honesty uh, you know uh, uh, there's uh, uh, people living godly lives there's godly ethical moral values that are inculcated that uh, you know and believers in the marketplace can be empowered uh, to do this even as they come together, discuss, pray uh, for the city. And believers uh, from all churches who are in the marketplace can also come together and how they can, you know, bring about kingdom excellence, kingdom integrity, and bring about the supernatural in the uh, marketplace. The, the, next, the last thing is uh, physical transformation, you know, um, how believers in the uh, uh, can join together in a city, you know, uh, to provide uh, for the lesser privilege in our city, uh, basically work with the uh, help in improving the health, hygiene, uh, transportation, uh, infrastructure in the city, uh, how they can uh, help in uh, creating uh, more jobs and also contributing to the eco economic growth of the city, also uh, helping the poor uh, with homes, uh, with, uh, you know, three meals a day, uh, uh, providing clothes, um, and also, you know, for children in the slums, uh, you know, giving them a good education so that their future is secure and built up. Uh, another last thing that, uh, you know, churches uh, uh, in our city and uh, our uh, Christian organizations can come together, or the citywide church can come together in unity and oneness helps in, uh, you know, responding towards persecution, uh, things that, uh, you know, uh, are done against the body of Christ. When there's mutual strength and support and unity together as a body of Christ, uh, then, you know, uh, we can stand strong in the times of persecution and uh, we can um, bring about some kind of measures that will help uh, the believers in our city, 
uh, to go through this time of persecution and also uh, to fight against uh, the forces of evil that are coming against us uh, and the laws uh, uh, and the rules that are coming against us. Uh, we can go against that and we can stand together and we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, help in, um, uh, you know, bringing about laws that uh, help in uh, uh, the body of Christ, you know, just expressing our own faith, uh, worshipping and also, uh, you know, propagating our own faith in our own city. Okay, so this is something which is very, very important, uh, you know, um, uh, the citywide church coming together to establish God's kingdom uh, in our city um, and uh, all of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, points that are given in this lesson is very practical. You know, uh, we can also share this. You can also share this with uh, the leaders in your own city uh, and see how you can come together, you know, uh, together as a citywide church uh, in transforming the city. Because, you know, when we do that, we can see God's power move, uh, you know, very powerfully, uh, not just rooming the social evils, but uh, through the unity, um, people will see God's love being expressed and people will uh, experience and, um, you know, will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and uh, uh, will know the power of God that is there uh, in the body of Christ. Okay, any questions on chapter 8? Anyone has any questions? No. How many of you have taken part in a citywide gathering where believers from various churches have come together and gathered together just to worship God? Maybe not everybody in a city, but Okay, uh, Zelatoli and Anita, how was your experience? What did you sense? What do you feel? It was a blessed, uh, spirit filled uh, encounter. Thank you, Zelatoli. Uh, Anita, you'd like to share? Ma'am, it's long back. I don't remember now. Okay, okay, thank you, Anita. We had this once in our uh, city in Bangalore City. It was a, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was just a powerful experience. Um, I also uh, was in another country, and I, uh, you know, was just uh, I had just gone there for a concert, basically um, uh, uh, conducted by a church. But you know, there were people from different uh, nations there in that huge auditorium. Uh, I myself am a, a different nation, just but just worshiping God together. Uh, you know, there's uh, uh, those words of uh, uh, knowledge and uh, wisdom and prophecy. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, being sent out and people were asked to pray for one another. And I just experienced such a powerful, uh, you know, uh, presence of God in that place. And just this whole thought came to me, you know, uh, uh, just here being here with other people who, you know, I don't even know. I don't know anyone else in the auditorium um, uh, but, you know, just being there, just worshipping God, uh, just gave me a taste of how it will be in heaven where, you know, people from uh, different tribes, different nations, people, groups coming together, just praising God. Uh, and uh, that, that experience was just so powerful, you know, uh, and it was just so wonderful and just gave me a taste of how it will be in heaven. So, you know, it will be nice, even as uh, some of you who are already pastors and leaders or heading uh, Christian organizations in your own churches, uh, in your own cities, uh, you could do this. Maybe, you know, start off with two or three churches, then move on to five, six, ten, um, you know, and uh, you can uh, 
you can just uh, you know build on that just pray um, and i'm sure god is going to move in the hearts of leaders because this is his uh, his uh, mandate this is his burden this is his desire this is this was his prayer even as jesus was here on this earth that all of us be one as they are one uh, so Isaac's question is, do you have different churches or denominations in your city? Yes, we have. Uh, we have Pentecostals, we have Charismatics, we have the Methodists, the Baptists, um, uh, the CSI, uh, that is a church of uh, South India. Uh, we have um, people from the Marthoma faith. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, evangelicals. Uh, yeah, we have people from different faiths. Yes. Those who also have, uh, you know, the Syrian Orthodox, the Orthodox uh, people who are the Orthodox worshippers, different denominations. Yeah, AG, yes. Thank you, Subhashish. All of them uh, in our city, so many of them, uh, independent churches, so it was just nice having all of them. Of course, everybody did not come, but for so many of them came, it was good. And we have these, uh, uh, APC has these monthly meetings uh, of for pastors and leaders in our city. And there are many pastors and leaders from various uh, 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 churches and organizations that who come for this monthly meetings. It's a wonderful time of gathering. Any thoughts on this? Anyone has any thoughts on this? Did you, know, did you know that this could be done? Did you know that there was a possibility of the city-wide churches coming together and doing this? Okay. Thank you, Subhashish. Yes, but at most times, like you stated, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, the challenge is the fear. Uh, in our own part of uh, the world, people are not so sincere. Pastors are not so sincere. So it's like um, the fear of losing their congregation or their members to certain pastors who have the desire to steal sheep can sometimes be an impediment. But the whole idea is actually, actually good. It's, it's good uh, that pastors and churches come together in a grand meeting. The idea is very good. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. So that's why we need to begin first with the leaders in the city. They coming together, uh, they building up a, a culture uh, 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 where there is trust, there's honesty, transparency, uh, when that is built up, then, you know, uh, and uh, when they start working on all of the other initiatives, uh, things will flow smoothly. Okay, uh, any questions? Any thoughts on this chapter? Anyone knows this hymn on uh, the hymn that is there, the end of this chapter? It's a very old hymn. The Church is One Foundation. Anyone knows this hymn? Nobody knows this hymn? Okay. Oh, we sing this in the Methodist uh, church. I think they sing it even in the CSI. Uh, I don't know if they sing it in the Anglican uh, worship services. Anyone here from the Methodist background? Okay, this is a very powerful hymn. It, uh, it's, I'll just sing the first stanza. Uh, just uh, love this hymn actually because uh, it's so powerful. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ the Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From him he came and sought her to be his holy bride. 
With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Uh, there's just uh, other, you know, um, stanzas to this. You can just read through this hymn, but a uh, very powerful uh, hymn uh, which we sing in the Methodist Church. Okay, uh, we'll move on to uh, chapter 9. Okay. Uh, in chapter 9, we're going to be looking at, uh, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, um, talking about how, you know, marriage uh, in the faith uh, can build up, you know, others uh, in the body of uh, Christ. Okay. So we're going to look at uh, that in this uh, chapter. Um, so God never intended for us, uh, you know, in our uh, life's journey to travel all alone. Uh, you know, he has uh, given us each other, uh, each other who we can support, we can pray for, we can build up. Uh, and that is why, you know, coming together on Sunday to church is not just basically to worship God, but also to fellowship you know, building up the unity uh, in the spirit and also, you know, edifying, building up the body of Christ, uh, helping those who are uh, new in the faith, helping those who are growing in the faith, uh, maturing them in their walk with God and also how as a church we can, uh, you know, uh, we can extend God's kingdom and also partner with other churches in um uh, in uh, you know building the kingdom of God in our um, uh, city, so uh, you know uh, uh, in our churches, you know we need to intentionally uh, you know uh, 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 arise. Some of us who are spiritually mature, mature, we need to intentionally be around for people, other people, you know, uh, father them, mother them you know, or just be a, a brother or a sister, you know, uh, when we say that, we're not saying, you know, taking care of their, uh, just their physical needs, but we're talking about a spiritual uh, needs, how we can build up others uh, in the uh, faith, okay? So, uh, you know, as uh, leaders, you know, many of us are busy, uh, you know, preaching and teaching and, uh, um, uh, you know, sharing the word of God and uh, ensuring that, uh, you know, all the, uh, the programs of the church are going on smoothly. But, uh, you know, uh, we become so busy in that that we forget uh, that, you know, uh, kingdom building is all about people. We need to build them up in their faith. Uh, we need to be true Christian brothers and fathers to each other in the kingdom uh, of uh, God. Okay. Uh, look at uh, what Paul says in First Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, verse 2. Okay. Uh, can somebody read that? It's on your screen. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 2 and sent them for Timothy our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning you. Thank you Jeffina. So uh, you know basically Timothy was uh, uh, you know a, a son in the faith. He, he was somebody who was a son to, uh, uh, to Paul. Uh, Paul refers him in various places as uh, uh, a son uh, and we see that you know uh, when uh, when uh, Paul saw Timothy we look at it uh, in the other chapter we study about this when Paul saw Timothy he saw something in him he took him on you know he nurtured him he built him up uh, in the faith uh, he also took him along with him on his various missionary journeys and uh, you know Timothy was able to see the life uh, at the ministry of Paul he was also nurtured spiritually by uh, 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 Apostle Paul and Apostle Paul uh, basically fathered uh, Timothy because th he looked at Timothy as his son but once Timothy had come to a place where he was mature in his faith in his walk with God uh, in his uh, uh, you know in take carrying on the responsibilities of being a minister of God uh, you know he calls him as a brother 
as a minister of God, as a fellow laborer. So here we see in First Thessalonians chapter three, verse two, um, you know, uh, Paul refers to Timothy no longer as a son, but calls him as a brother, as a minister of God, as a fellow um, uh, laborer. Okay, so <clears throat> you know we learn that. Um, you know, uh, uh, in our interactions uh, with people, you know, we need to build this kind of a relationship with people in the church where we are fathering them or mothering them or we are basically being a brother or a sister uh, in nurturing them up in their uh, faith. But if you look at, uh, uh, you know, Christian ministers, uh, you know, their interactions with the people is basically... Uh, uh, one of a business transaction you're basically just talking things that are uh, more you know uh, business related or ministry related uh, we're basically just sharing our ideas we're just sharing information uh, and there is no relationship that is uh, built there is no uh, you know uh, friendships that are uh, built even if there is a relationship you know it's on a very superficial level where we're just meeting we're just talking uh, we're just sharing information and ideas but we're not sharing our uh, uh, heart and you know uh, uh, leaders in the city uh, christian leaders they don't want to share their uh, heart because uh, you know they are uh, scared that even if, if they share their weaknesses or the areas where uh, uh, you know, they are uh, uh, vulnerable or the areas where they are uh, going through temptations or a, a problem or difficulty, then other ministers, you know, or would uh, gossip about them, would, would uh, talk about them. Uh, and, you know, uh, so hence ministers, when they come together, they are relating on a very superficial uh, level. But, uh, you know, we need to come in a level where we are able to share our heart with each other, where we are able to open up ourselves, we are able to be transparent uh, so that we can really receive support and, and, and you know, strengthen uh, in, in strengthen each other. And when we do that, you know, um, uh, we come to a place where oh, we can, you know, older, mature uh, leaders uh, in the city can actually father or, uh, you know, uh, uh, mature ladies uh, in their walk with God who have uh, journeyed in uh, uh, the Lord, you know, uh, now they are old, they are mature, they can mother, you know, uh, 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 other uh, uh, ladies who are, uh, uh, you know, uh, as leaders or other uh, uh, women who are in the ministry, they can mother them, they can, uh, you know, they can um, uh, uh, mentor them, they can build them up in their um, faith. And when we do this, you know, uh, we can learn from each other, uh, we can pass on, you know, or the mistakes that, uh, you know, they, the older generation have made uh, uh, and they can help us to, you know, prevent us from doing those same errors, those same mistakes. Uh, there's, uh, there's a place where uh, younger ministers uh, can go uh, to older ministers where they can share their problems, whether they're having problems with the church or, you know, their own marriages or their own walk with God. They can go and they can share and they can be built up. They can have some Somebody who can mentor them, who can walk with them, journey with them through this difficult time, uh, through this challenging time that they're going through, or if some uh, pastors are, you know, are having a problem in uh, raising up their children, their children are going away from the Lord, they can go to mature ministers who have raised up godly children, uh, they can share with them, uh, they can get their help. Uh, uh, and you know these mature uh, leaders can pray, uh, can guide, can lead them, uh, and all this you know really contributes again to co-working, co-partnering, and also uh, the leaders you know uh, coming together in unity, building up uh, the citywide church, and also mentoring or fathering, mothering, or being a brother and sister to those uh, uh, in, uh, in the. Uh, uh, believers in in the body of christ so in kingdom building we need to move to be ministers of god and fellow laborers of being brothers in the kingdom okay i'm so sorry we uh, crossed four minutes of our uh, time i just got carried away 
sorry i'm missing the time uh, so we'll take a break now and we'll come back at 10:04 okay so 10:04 we'll meet after break sorry i extended our uh, time i'll see you after the break thank you <laughs>